I was looking through some boxes I have in storage recently and I found a box of some of my earlier dolls. Finding your own style as an artist can be tricky so I tried lots of different things before I settled on the little button eye dolls I make now. I think this box might have some interesting and possibly embarrassing failed projects in it so I thought why not torture myself and have a look through it here on camera with you lot. Okay so let's get started and see what's in here. Oh, <laughs> this is one of my very early dolls. She's tiny and I don't know why I felt at that time that because dolls were gothic they needed to have velvet dresses. I hate the feel of velvet but yes she is all made in one piece. She's a little cloth doll. I made her on a basic cookie cutter type of pattern and she's not very well stuffed at all. There's no stuffing in her hands. <laughs> she's very wrinkly, very puckered. She's got very basic hand stitched features. The buttons are just stitched to the front of her head. I think I stitched them on before stuffing her so they're quite loose. The hair is hand stitched. It just seems to be stitched down the middle. It's just basic yarn and then there's nothing underneath it here. It's just stitched down the middle and then secured at the sides. Very, very simple. I didn't have a clue how to make a doll when I started. I just thought, can't be that hard, give it a go. And I tried. <laughs> this was 2011. So this was right at the very beginning of my doll making journey. But the basic idea was there. So this one, <laughs> she's a little bit more thought about a little bit more complex than the first one but still very basic let's have a look has she got a date on her yes this is also 2011 so this is quite soon after making that one and she is again quite a basic pattern the legs this time have been made separately out of some striped fabric and i have oh she's got lacy underwear too oh yeah the legs are kind of let's have a look how have i attached them ah i think what i tried to do is make the head and body and arms out of one piece and then pinned the legs in place and then i machine sewed across them which isn't a very neat finish and I skipped some stitches as well. <laughs> I think that's why I gave her the lacy underwear to cover up all the messy stitching. But again, she's still got a velvet skirt and velvet shoes. I was just starting to add the little swirly eyeliner detail, but this was still stitched in some thick, feels like cotton thread. The eyes are still stitched to the front of the head. They're not stitched all the way through, so they're quite loose. I think she's a bit better stuffed. She is a little bit firmer, but the head is still quite puckered around the edges and quite soft around here. I'd needle felted the hair, but it wasn't particularly well felted. I think because the head isn't quite firm enough, the yarn didn't felt very well into it. But I do like the hairstyle. It's just very basic double knit black yarn, but it's a cute style. Maybe I should bring that back. The stripes on the leg are almost matched up. They're not too bad at all. Yeah, she's not going to win any prizes, but I was starting to learn. Okay, so here we have another button eye doll. I think she's a little bit better made. Still the very basic pattern with the head, body, arms all in one piece. And let's have a look. She's got a label. I had some little satin labels made. I was making dolls under the name of Strange Little Girls. Ah, so at this point, I decided that trying to machine sew the legs in place was not going to work and I started whip stitching them to create a hinge joint. The eyes are fixed much better. These are fixed through to the back of the head. That's how I do them now. I wasn't doing any shading around them at that point but I was starting to draw on the eyeliner detail in a fine liner pen which I found allowed me to give them much more detail. I think overall the stuffing's not bad, the sewing's not bad but the shape of the head was not great. It's quite square around here and there was a lot of puckering around the neck. 
So here I was trying a slightly different style of doll. I was trying to move away from the button eyes because I didn't think that that style of doll was going to sell. I knew that there was something not right about my dolls. I didn't know what it was. So I was grasping at straws, trying lots of different things, trying lots of different styles to try and get something to stick. I tried hand painting the faces. She's quite sleepy looking. She's got closed eyes. I like the eyelashes. She's got the characteristic curly eyeliner and also the tattoo down her arm. I was starting to play around with jointing at this point. The arms are button jointed, but they're quite loose. The head on this one is jointed in a similar way to how I joint the heads now, although the stitches are too big and they're all quite visible all the way around. So it's not particularly neat. Again, she could have been stuffed better. Um, there's a little bit of puckering around here. Maybe I left the seam allowance too big. She's got magenta and black hair made from double knit yarn. Needle felted, but still quite loose and pulling away in places because the head still, although quite firm, still not quite firmly stuffed enough. I was still whip stitching the legs in place at that point and that was taking quite a bit of time. These days I use a slightly different method to make a hinge joint for the legs and it's just a stitch at each side which gives a lot more flexibility. This style didn't really take on so I kept trying. Then I tried something totally different from the gothic dolls I've been making before and I thought I'd go, I'd have a go at the hippie side and made some like this. She's got a very pale flesh tone skin. I was practicing with the eyelashes and the eyelid detail, lots of shading there, some highlighting. That's quite nice. I think she's stuffed a lot better. She seems a lot more firm. The hair, as a result, is needle felted better. It's holding a lot better to the head. Use some nice textured yarn for this one, quite fluffy. I also had to go at giving her some boots. I used some faux suede fabric for these and stitched them to the legs. These days when I make boots, I tend to paint them on, uh, but the texture for these is quite nice. Uh, she's got some nice beading around the bottom of her dress as well. Again, the velvet, but nice teal shade, some nice beading around it and some beaded jewellery. She's cute, but she really wasn't my style, I think. I was looking at what a lot of other doll makers were doing and I was trying to fit in with what I thought was popular. I wasn't being true to my own style. If you want to have a career as a doll artist, you have to find your own style and you have to be true to what comes from your own experience and from the heart, I think. Here's another one I made, I think around a similar time. Closed eyes with the fluttery eyelashes and a very nice textured yarn for her hair. I was experimenting with different skin tones. This is quite a dark tan fabric. She's got the button joints for the arms and the jointed head. I think the shape of the head is a little bit better. There is a little bit of puckering around here. The body is quite firmly stuffed. She's quite well constructed, I think. So this is the first clay doll that I made. I was in awe of some of the lovely hand sculpted clay dolls that I was seeing and I wanted to try it. This is Arietti from the Borrowers books. I loved those books when I was a kid. She's not very well sculpted. She's unique looking. She's got very big eyes and quite pronounced eyebrows. She's painted in acrylics. I think. The hands are quite detailed. I don't know if you can see the details on the palms, but she's got a wire armature and she's padded with polyester fibre fill. She's got little skinny legs and big boots. Quite cute. Uh, she's positionable, poseable. I had a lot of fun playing around with air drying clay. I was never very good at it. I would have liked to explore that further, but air drying clay was quite expensive and I didn't have the finances to really keep buying clay to practice. 
I made a few of these dolls and I would definitely have liked to do more with that. I don't think I would be able to do that here on the boat because you need to have a lot of space to have everything lying around drying. If I ever had a larger studio space again, I'd like to try more clay dolls. She's not the prettiest doll, but she's cute. She's got character. Here we have another clay doll. I was going back to my gothic roots with this one. She's got a very Victorian gothic dress with lots of layers. Got a wire armature and some stripy tights and very shiny shoes. I think I varnished those with polyurethane varnish. I used some jersey striped fabric to cover up the wire armature. There's quite a lot of padding there. Her fists are very clenched. I think what happened was I heard about somebody sending out dolls in the post and the hands getting broken and I was really worried about that happening so I wanted to design the hands in a way they weren't going to get broken. Overall I think she's pretty cute. She doesn't look very happy but I've always been quite fond of this one. She never did find a home so she'll live with me. Maybe she'll come out of the box for a little while. Another craft that I had a go at for a while was uh, repainting Monster High dolls, uh, which was a lot of fun, but I was never particularly good at it. This was a Laguna Blue doll that I painted. She's still got her original hair, so some of the glues come through and it's quite greasy and sticky. She could have done with being rerouted, really. The face is actually better than I remember. Some quite nice blue shading around her eyes and some nice fine eyelashes. I'm in awe of people who can do a really good job of painting Monster High dolls. They're so tiny and the work involved is so fine. You need such a steady hand and it's a lot of hours of work to get a good result because you're building it up layer by layer by layer because it's like a, made from a doll that a lot of people consider to be a toy people don't see the artistry in repaints and I just think they're absolutely incredible and to all the doll repaint artists out there seriously kudos to you because I think you do an amazing job. I had a lot of fun with these but as a career not for me. It's interesting to see the progression of my work through different styles and different media. Some aspects of the dolls we've looked at today are very different to the dolls I'm making now, but I can see some elements of my design that have carried all the way through. If you'd like to see more of the dolls I'm making now, have a look at this video next and I'll see you next time. Bye!